G'day guys, Ryan here, your Chief Espresso Officer. And today we're gonna to explore the world of Costa Rica through the history of coffee. Because coffee has been such a huge part of Costa Rica for hundreds of years, and yet most people don't really even know about the origin that much. So I'm gonna take you on a journey through the landscapes of the volcanoes, the land of fire, and those cute little cappuccino monks, which we derive one of the most famous coffee names from, the cappuccino. Let's get into it your ultimate guide to Costa Rica coffee. So, for those of you who don't know, Costa Rica is in Central America, nestled right in between South and North America on that little strip of land there with Guatemala, Nicaragua, and below it, Panama, which is also famous for its Panama Geisha coffees. So, what's so special about Costa Rica? About five million Ticos, the people that live in Costa Rica, living around the land, and only 300,000 of them live in San Jose, the capital city. Incredibly, 10% of the entire population are coffee farmers. That's how big the coffee world is there. And even though they only produce 1% of the entire global coffee exports, they are considered one of the best specialty coffee producers in the world. You see, the country is famous for its biodiversity. It has coastlines and beaches, it has highlands, it has jungles, it has volcanoes with that rich soil, perfect for growing coffee. And the climate is a pretty much tropical climate, so it's 23 degrees Celsius, about 75 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. And the humidity is quite high. So because the stable environment is there, coffee can grow really nice and slowly. And when it grows slowly, we call this a strictly hard bean because all of those sugars, they go straight into the cherries, which makes it a much sweeter tasting coffee. The country is referred to as the land of fire. But did you know they actually have a blue zone in this country? A blue zone is given to an area where people live longer and healthier lives. And the average person lives to over 90 years of age in Costa Rica in this particular blue zone. And that, I think, has some relevance to why the coffee tastes so amazing. Maybe it's the water, maybe it's the soil, maybe it's just the landscape itself. Something in there makes this coffee very special. Nicaragua and Guatemala are more famous Famous for their coffees, but Costa Rica was the first country in that Central American region to get coffee. It actually came across from Cuba in 1779, and the locals used it for themselves. They didn't export it until about 1821, when Costa Rica wanted to get some separation from Spain and from Europe, and they wanted to be more independent. They distributed free seeds of coffee all around the country so that farmers would get more into coffee than growing sugar and other tobacco and other exports. And it only took 10 years before it overtook the other exports like sugar and tobacco to become the biggest commodity exported out of Costa Rica. Now, I already mentioned that the climate is perfect for growing coffee because it has that consistent about 20 degrees Celsius climate the entire year round. Also, the rich volcanoes that grow all through the center of Costa Rica makes it a perfect soil to grow coffee in. And that's where most of the region sits. The most famous ones being Tarazu, Central Valley, Western Valley, and another region called Heredia, which is just north of San Jose, the capital city. Down the center of Costa Rica is so important is because the cold air coming off the Pacific Ocean hits those high mountainous regions, cools down the whole area, and creates a lovely rainfall consistent all year round. Everyone knows Brazil is the major exporter of coffee around the world with about 30%. I mean, the country is huge. It's bigger than Australia and it's bigger than the US. It's such a huge country, no wonder it produces so much. But Costa Rica, as small as it is, is still the 15th largest producer of coffee around the world. Now, they would have probably been bigger, but what happened during World War II is that the Brits just stopped buying coffee and they turned to tea. In fact, they bought up the entire lot of tea worldwide to use in their war. The Costa Ricans didn't give up. They just doubled down and focused in on making specialty coffee, making the best production of coffee that you can find. And 
In doing so, they actually discovered some of the most beautiful processing techniques that we now use today worldwide. Because in 2006, a very special man experimented with two different processing methods and created an entirely new one called honey processing, which is exactly the type of coffee that we have available right now. From Tarazu, a red honey processed coffee that is just out of this world with flavors of nectarines, hazelnuts and vanilla. If you jump online to coffeebeansdelivered.com.au, you can purchase some there. And hey, if you like this video so far, give me a thumbs up. It helps to give it a little boost and let other people know what Costa Rican coffee tastes like. This honey wash processing. There was a man in 2006 called Juan Alvarado who experimented with a couple of processing methods. The one that they normally use in Costa Rica is called a wash, and that's famous throughout the entire Central American and in South America as well. That's basically taking all the mucilage off, all of the flesh, everything, strip it down to just the seed, and then drying it out. So that gets rid of any of that mucilage. But by leaving some of the mucilage on there, that's the stickiness where the honey wash gets its name, the stickiness stays on there and all of that sweet nutrients go into the seed itself, and then when you dry it out you end up with a much creamier richer and more intense sweetness than you would just a straight washed coffee so Juan Alvarado took two coffees that he used with this processing technique and he entered them into a competition and he won first and second prize and everyone asked him what was this technique that he used he showed them the technique which was at the time somewhere between a natural and a washed and he invented the new processing technique called honey washed and that has gone worldwide now to so many countries around the world especially in the Americas using this particular process to get that richer more intense flavor there are about seven different processes for honey washed but the main four are white yellow red and black and they're just different stages of that fermentation process so the black honey washed means that the mucilage has really dried out for the two or three weeks that they sit out in the sun and so it goes quite black in color and then quite intense and almost boozy in the flavor so often that'll be come across as like a red wine or a really boozy flavor and it doesn't really translate well to coffees that go into milk but really good for coffees that are just drunk as a black coffee by themselves now and they're also creating a whole bunch of other variations of the honey wash processing so middling stages so they've gotten golden orange purple there's so many different ones now and they're using different cultures and fermentation techniques to keep adding to that but it all started with one Ramon Alvarado back in 2006. Now, I wanna take some time to talk about our Costa Rican coffee that we have here, because I'm really proud to be able to deliver this coffee to people around the world. And so if you're interested in trying some Costa Rica and finding out what makes it so unique, then you can jump online to coffeebeansdelivered.com.au and you can see the range there. So this particular coffee was brought to me by the Coop de Tarazu, which is a co-op in the Tarazu region, consisting of about a thousand farmers that are have all banded together to get a better rate for their coffees, spread the risk across all of them, and also creates a better business for the entire family. And if you want, you can use the code YouTubeFamily2022, written across the bottom, pop that into your cart, apply that discount code, and get the coffee delivered to you wherever you are at a cheaper rate. And if you're just sticking around for the info, please give me a thumbs up or give me a subscribe. My mission is to teach as many people around the world about coffee and about how amazing it is and really focus in on the education side of coffee because the more we understand about this beautiful coffee, the better it gets for everyone around the world. And hey, if I miss something about Costa Rica or you live in Costa Rica and you wanna add some valuable information, please leave a comment in the comment section below because I love talking to everyone from around the world about their experiences with the different types of coffees. So aside from the honey wash processes that we've talked about already, there is also the wash process coffee. And this is probably the most popular form of processing coffee around the world. So washing it means you're stripping it of all of that mucilage right down to the seed through a depulper, then drying it out 
on beds until it's completely dry and the moisture's dropped down to about 10%. This gives the coffee a really clean and crisp flavor and is more exactly like the varietal itself rather than having the flesh or the external environmental factors have any influence over the flavor. So a lot of people prefer wash coffees on milk because it has a lively acidity and it will cut through the milk and bring those nice flavors to the forefront of that latte or cappuccino. So in general, what does coffee taste like from Costa Rica. It's very hard to sum up because there's such a vast variety of coffees and the more we understand about coffees now, we understand there's more factors than we thought of that actually influence the flavor. But as a general rule, when you're thinking of Costa Rican coffees, you're thinking of clean, crisp flavors, bright acidity, mild body, so it means it doesn't hit, sit very heavy on your tongue, and mostly sweet, floral flavors. So often a light flavor might come through, maybe it's that vanilla or maybe it's that light nuttiness that comes through. It's not until you do the honey ones that you really feel that intense sweetness coming through. So Tarazu is probably the most famous of the regions, but there's Pau Macau, which is just above San Jose. And that's also famous for its beautiful coffees that come out of Costa Rica as well. Like the coffee that we had previously from Cerro Los Findes, which were two brothers who grew coffee on the side of a volcanic mountain, slightly active. They doubled down on their farm and made a huge impact on the coffee coming out of San Jose. So that's it for this guide on Costa Rican coffee. Let's go over a quick recap of what we learned today. We know it's based in Central America, nestled between Nicaragua and Panama, and the coffees there are mostly grown in Terrazu or the West and Central Valleys, although some coffee comes out of Tres Rios and Heredia. Heredia and Heredia. I'm probably butchering the names here. And if you're a local Tico, you can please pick me up on my pronunciation. And what flavors you're getting are a nice light, mild body with lively acidity, great for milk drinks, great for in black coffees as well. There's a two processes there that they use. One is the wash process, which is most common, and then the honey wash process, which they invented themselves. Most of the coffee is grown in the highlands, although some of it is grown in the jungles. Most of it is grown about 1400 meters above sea level. And it's a climate that's perfectly designed for growing coffee all year round, 23 plus degrees, humidity, rainfall, lots of beautiful nutrients from the volcanic soil, and obviously amazing farmers that bring it all together, processes it and export it out of the country so that we can enjoy it wherever we are around the world. I'm Ride, your Chief Espresso Officer, and enjoy your brew.